Okay, so in the last video we talked about what a basic feasible solution is for the transportation tableau. And I'll just to remind you, if you have M sources and N demands, um, we needed M plus N minus 1 variables uh, in the array, in the transportation tableau array, and those variables should not form a loop in that array, otherwise they are linearly dependent. Okay, so we want to figure out now how to construct an initial BFS. And then we're going to have a method later on for making that BFS even better. So our first BFS will be uh, constructed using the Northwest Corner Rule, and then we'll have something called the Minimum Cost Method, and Vogel's Approximation Method will round it out. Okay. So the Northwest Corner Rule, you start off in the upper left position, you stick as much as you can into that position, which should uh, deplete the supply, or the, the in the row or the column. Okay, move the column to the right if there's any supply remaining. No supply remaining, remove one row down. Let's see how this works. <clears throat> uh, so here I am in the 1-1 one, one position. Max it out. I've got 3 over here, 5 over there. That means I can put a 3 there. Okay, that means I don't have anything. I'm finished with this first column, and I have 2 left here. So let me remember that. I'm going to have 2 left there. And so now I go to my northwest corner, which is right here. Max it out. I've got 3 there. I've got 2 there, because remember the 3 there. So that means I can put 2 there. That's the maximum. Put it there. That finishes off this row. Okay, and now I only have one left here, and this is the northwest corner. I've got a one and a two, and so I'm going to max this out with the one. That finishes off this row, and I go to the next northwest corner. Okay, so that's going to be uh, right here, <clears throat> right, because we finished up this row. We haven't finished this row yet. Uh, there's one left over here and a two there, so I can put a one there. Okay, so that finishes off this row. And where's my next northwest corner? It's right here. And so uh, how much do I have here? I've got a one there. I've got a three there, so I need to put a one there. That finishes off this column. And so uh, what's left? This is now a two, and so that two can be put right there. Very good. So there is our basic feasible solution. Three, two, one, 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 two. Good. Okay, let's see if you can do one. Uh, pause here for a second, try this one out, and then come back and see if your solution matches mine. Okay, are you back? Let's see if your solution matches mine. Uh, so we started off here with a 20. Uh, so that leaves a 20 there, and I finish with this column. I go to the northwest corner, that's a 20, that finishes off this row. So this first row and this first column are done. My next northwest corner is here, and so uh, let's see, it looks like there's a 10 there. And so that finishes off this column, and so this is my next northwest corner, and there's a 50 there, 50 there, so I can put a 50 there. That finishes off this uh, row and this column, and so that leaves a 50 in that corner, and that's it. So is this a basic feasible solution? Did you stop here? It's uh, because we're missing one variable, right? One, two, three, four, five. So one of these variables I have to identify as being the zero variable. Okay, so that's really important. Uh, just to arbitrarily I pick this variable, but the main thing you want to remember when you pick a variable is that you do not want to see any loops. So therefore, for example, you would not pick this variable because that would create a loop right here. Right? But this variable, if I pick this variable, there are no loops. Okay, so that gives me my basic feasible solution that is also degenerate. Good. Now, Northwest Corner method is kind of a uh, fun, little simple method, but it doesn't even take into account the costs that we're trying to minimize. So I wonder if we can get a better method. The minimum cost method tries to be a little bit better than that. And the way this will work is, you can probably guess, when you take your array 
you want to pick the cell with the minimum cost. Max that cell out. That's going to deplete either the row or the column. And so uh, scratch that row or column. And then if you have a tie, you can just choose a row or column um, uh, just in, at random. Okay, and then you repeat. And uh, let's see how that one works. <clears throat> so here's my array. Do you see the cell with a minimum cost? That's the one with a 5. And so this is the cell we're going to max out. I've got a 40 and a 50 there, so I can put a 40 there. And this time I'm going to be keeping these supplies and demands up to date so I don't get confused. Um, we'll, we'll leave them in, or we'll put them back in later. Um, so there, I can max this one out. That finishes off this column, right? So that scratches the column. Good. And now the cells that are left over here, which is the minimum. Uh, looks like the 6 is the minimum. Uh, max it out. I can, I've got a 30 there, 45 there, so I can max it out with a 30. That finishes off this column. Good. And then I've updated my supply and demand. Okay, now I've got these three cells and these three cells. Looks like the smallest one is the 8. So I've got 45 there, or 15, uh, so I can max that out with a 15. That finishes off this row. And I've got 30 left here. Okay, out of these four cells, the 9, 13, 14, 16, 9 is the minimum. I've got 30 there, 60 there. I can put a 30 there. That finishes off this column. Good. And then finally, I think we're just stuck, right? 30 and 10 have to go into these two positions. And that finishes us off. Good. 1, and 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That is our BFS. Excellent. Okay. So now, oh, so now it's your turn. Here's a, another example. Give the minimum cost method a try. Remember, you're always going for the minimum cost. Max out those cells. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here <clears throat> and answer the question, and I will continue. Okay. I will continue. We're going to... Uh, there were a couple of ties. In this case, I'm just going to write down the answer here that I got. Uh, 20, 20, 10, 50, 50, and then I ended up having to put a zero somewhere. Okay. Good. So if you have questions about that, come by and see me. Because we got to get to our third method, and that is Vogel's approximation method. The problem with the current method is that uh, you may be going for the minimum cell, <clears throat> but that may lock you into a suboptimal solution just by going almost for the minimum. So Vogel's approximation method tries to look forward to see if you're going to get locked into a bad solution. And so uh, the way it's going to do that is it's going to construct what's going to be called a penalty. And the penalty is the difference between the second most minimum and the minimum in each row and column. Okay, and so we want to make sure that we don't get penalty, or we don't get penalized for the lowest cost value in that row or column. <clears throat> and so we're going to try to delete those big penalty cells or uh, rows or columns right off the bat. Let's see how this works. It, it, it sounds complicated, but it's actually not too bad once you've tried it out a few times. So let's see what these penalties are in this case. Uh, this first row, I take the minimum and the next minimum. So that's 8 and 6. 8 minus 6 is 2, so the penalty here is 2. So notice that that's not a very big penalty, right? So if I don't get a chance to use my 6, the 8's not really that bad. Okay, the next uh, penalty will be 9 minus 7, it looks like. So 9 minus 7 is also 2, that's not too bad. The next penalty will be 9 minus 5 which is 4. That's a little bit bigger. Uh, the next penalty, 9 minus 8, so that's only 1, so it doesn't really matter. You know, those two are so close together. Uh, this one's going to be 9 minus 6, which is 3. That's starting to get a little high. 13 minus 10, 3. That's a little high. Uh, so 7 minus 5 is 2. That's not too bad. Okay, so the idea behind VAM, then, is to pick the row or the column with the highest penalty. This, this row is our highest penalty row, and then 
go ahead and take the minimum from that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and max out our cell with the highest. We're gonna, this is called, we're going to be greedy here in our row, max that guy out. Okay, so I've gone ahead and canceled out this column. And now we have to reconstruct our differences if we have to. Sometimes you don't have to. Uh, in this case, there are a couple of penalties here that we need to recompute because the 7 and the 5 are gone now. And so that's 12 minus 9 is the new penalty here. And then 14 minus 9 is the new penalty here. Okay, so again, uh, 5 is going to be the max. And so we're going to have to deal with row 3 again. So I'm going to max out this value right here. This is the new minimum cost in this row. Max that out. <clears throat> that finishes off this row. Good. Recompute the penalties. I've got a 1, a 6, a 3, 3 and a 2. So the 6 is the new uh, max. So I take this column and I look for the smallest value in the cost. And that is the 6. And so I'm going to max this cell out. I could either put a 20, go up to 45, so 20 is going to be the max. That finishes this column off. Recompute the penalties again. That's only these two. right? So if I recompute the penalties, it goes a lot faster when the computer already uh, kind of does them automatically. Uh, I've got a 2 and a 4, so this is going to be my biggest penalty. So this is the entry right? that I'm going to bring in next. Good, so 45 cancels this column. And so what's left over? 10 and 13. Uh, it looks like I'm kind of forced into this position, these two positions, right? I'm going to need to um, get both of these in order to fulfill my uh, goal here. So that leaves us with this array. So here's our final BFS, 45, 20, 25, 15, 40, and 10. Good. That is the uh, VAM. Here's another um, example. Press pause. And I'll just run through the solution fairly quickly. The differences are here. So I get that value. Then I recompute the differences. Choose two, recompute the differences. All right, so now I've got uh, this entry here. The 50 is the biggie, so I'm going to take that guy out. That finishes off this column, and I think I'm done. Okay, so that's it. You can look over that example again. Um, we're running out of time for this one. I will see you later.